Hey everybody, what's going on? Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training, end of day, September 15th, 2021. Hey everybody, up on the premium and core membership site, we do have the Ford IDS Pro-Ring procedures for that 2010 Ford Edge from last week. I finally got that video edited, it is up on the site, so go check it out. Guys, uh, I had a little bit of an interesting day today. Started out with a Acura TL, just a PCM slash TCM, or as Honda calls it, a PGMFI and AT controller update for a transmission shutter. This job went pretty well, no big deal there. Next, we're off to a 2010-ish, or maybe 11 or 12, I don't even remember, what is a uh, town and country or caravan, same difference with a 3.6 liter. This engine was just installed, and the customer complaint was a uh, crank no start and they said they had a lot of codes. Now I checked codes and we did have quite a few things going on here. Now I gotta tell you, the first thing I did in this situation is I saved the DTCs. I, you know, I made a printout and saved the report on the Autel. The next thing I did was I cleared them all and the first code to return was a map sensor code. So I was kind of interested in that. And then second of all, I did check for cranking RPM on a scan tool. I had zero cranking RPM on a scanner. So I was kind of interested in this map sensor code, and that's kind of what led me to fixing this vehicle. So looking at the map sensor, unplugging it, I had 5 volts on the signal wire. That's to the PCM, so I knew the PCM was kind of putting that signal out. Apparently the sensor probably pulls that down to the proper voltage. Now I had no 5-volt reference. Looking at the diagram, I could see that the 5 volt reference went through a connector. It went through this connector C234, and taking a poke around, I'll show you what happened. All right, guys, so we have 5 volts on this purple wire. Okay, this purple wire or violet wire goes back to the computer. Um, it's a straight shot, there's no connectors uh, in line. This is the map sensor connector, and this goes all the way back to the engine control module. Now, this should be our 5 volt reference to this map sensor. I'm kind of chasing after the one code that's easy to get to. It's harder to get to the crank sensors or cam sensor. Well, not that hard, but anyways, I don't have 5 volts on this wire. If you look at the diagram, it goes through C234. Connector 234 is supposed to be way down in here, and I'm trying to get to that. I'm outside. I can't really, I don't want to crawl around on my hands and knees to work on this thing, but I believe C234 is going to be one of these two but you see this connector in my hand right now this is gray on this side and black on this side it looks like the uh, female side of the connector is the black side now there's another connector down here oh and i think if i can get to it i'll show you it's a real wrestling match but basically there's another connector down there that has opposite i'm gonna unplug them both and show you also guys another thing that you can always look at whenever you're looking at connectors to see if you got a dead giveaway of a problem is if you can see the cavities I have here we got a smashed wire right down here a little bit um, but you see how we have one two the third wire is a blue wire if you go over here to the opposite side of this you can barely see it but we have a bunch of wires where we don't have wires on this side so that's kind of a giveaway that was a wrestling match but as you can see here maybe you can see I have the black to black and the uh, the gray to the lighter gray I'm hoping that's right it's very light gray to light gray but I can tell you one thing the wire colors match up so that's got to be good let's take a look at our situation over here at our uh, map sensor I'm hoping to have five volts on the one wire always test your meter before anything 12 volts and then program right here I should have five volts bada bing bada boom I bet you this thing's gonna start up and run it hasn't rained for a while I guess they put an engine in it. it's been sick for a minute Let's take a look see before we had no cranking rpm that was our major problem here comes the moment of truth we'll go to live data and i'm gonna go ahead and uh get this over to the cranking rpm or should i say engine rpm right there engine rpm zero rpm let's go ahead and crank it up oh boy first time this thing's ran i better make sure they got oil and cool in it but that's a beautiful thing. Next, we're off to a 2019 Ford F550. This has the big 6.8 V10 in it. This is a gas motor, and the customer complaint is intermittent loss of power. They say they go down the highway sometimes and it just won't move. It kind of will decelerate all the way to like 40 miles an hour, and they're putting their foot into it. This had a boatload of lean codes and all kinds of O2 sensor codes in it when I got there. 
I recorded this information, but the one thing that caught my eye right off the bat was that we had a situation of the fuel trims were a little bit elevated idle, and just bringing this up to 2,000 RPM or 2,500 RPM in park, I mean just no load at that speed, our fuel trims were buried. Now I did take off the mass airflow sensor, the air filter on this vehicle was just totally clogged. I could beat it and was like almost like when you uh, smack the filter for a shop vac after you've been doing some drywall work. This thing was just totally clogged up. So I thought that might have been a problem there. I did take off the mass airflow sensor, blew it out and uh, cleaned it out. Didn't have anything, any change in uh, uh, running. Also, I tried running this with mass airflow sensor disconnected and it ran uh, kind of really bad actually. I was really stumbling with the mass airflow sensor disconnected. I did not actually drive this vehicle. I got to tell you guys that I was not able to drive it. So uh, that being said, I took a look at the fuel pressure. Fuel pressure was within specification. I think it's like 50 to 60 PSI or something like that is the spec in all data. Now I got to tell you, once I hit the release on my uh, fuel pressure gauge, I got a little tiny dribble out. I mean, it just dribbled out just a little bit and the pressure dropped fast. So I was trying to duplicate that. It wouldn't happen all the time. Nice thing we're about working on a tow truck is we got easy access. So we got, uh, you can see here, we're looking about 5.9 amps on the fuel pump. Now I call the fuel pump on this one. If it doesn't work out, I'll let you know and I'll go back there and videotape the fix of this when I do fix it. But I am pretty confident that we can uh, carry some current through this wire showing 5.9 amps. I think that should be enough to develop the pressure needed. Um, I did not have my Pico scope with me today, so, and I did not have an amp clamp to put on the scope, uh, even my U scope with me. I just had a U scope today. Long story on that, but that's another story for another day. Next, we're off to a 2003 Chevy Silverado. Take a look. All right, everybody, we get this uh, 2003 Chevy truck. Got a uh, Class 2 data link malfunction that's stored in the body control module. What's interesting here is I had to do a security alert and I think the customer may have replaced the computer. And uh, you can see we've got the uh, security light on. It does start and run for me now all the time. So the class two data um, is just on pin two of the DLC. You can see we have activity here. I put my U-scope on here and I want you guys to see that we look have what looks like a good pattern. Now when I zoom out on my time here, oh, I hit the right button. Let's go ahead and put some more time on the screen. Watch what happens. Oh, did you see that little high spot? Keep an eye on this thing. We keep on getting an intermittent blip that's way high. Let's see if it happens again. Try and catch this in the act. There's a little not one right there. There's one right there. So I keep on getting this uh, high spot. Now, using the U-scope, I want to basically see what's going on at that spot, okay? So I'm gonna go over to the menu menu button. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to go to the trigger menu and hit OK. Now I'm going to go to trigger level and, and when I'm on the trigger level like I am here I can move the trigger level up or down. I'm going to go ahead and move it up. So we're triggering on that high spot there. So that's all we're seeing. Now what I'm going to also do is I want to bring down my time now. So I'm going to hit OK to get out of there and let's go ahead back to our time and I'm going to bring down my time I want to have a good look-see here at what's going on when they happen. So it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes you'll see the screen will go blank, but there's a module that's a little bit higher than it should be. Um, if you look, the other modules are talking. There are zero to seven volts. This one's going higher. So we got to figure out what module that is. I just thought I'd share this with you all. You can see this thing's a bit of a wiring mess. It's got spaghetti mess, as I call it, down here. We got a lot of stuff going on. I was just thinking. I saw this aftermarket radio laying there. I wonder if uh, maybe something's going on here. Let me go ahead and uh, see if we can watch this. Prop that up there. Maybe. Maybe not. I always try and give you guys a good view. It's hard. So you see we've got that pattern still still happening high let's go ahead and disconnect this baloney okay i don't think it's happened since we unplugged this thing whatever this baloney is huh what is this let's plug it back in oh there's that spike 
don't know if you guys, I'm hoping you guys can see that. Okay, so let's check this out. Unplug it. We have no activity, right? Screen's frozen. Plug this baloney back in. If I can, maybe I broke it. There's that spike when I plug this in. We have that high signal. Okay, so we got rid of our U1000. How about them apples? That's pretty cool. So guys, I hope you can see the importance of having a quick little scope like this U-scope. Remember, we're going to be giving these away at handsonautotraining.com if you're a membership of the Core Premium. I haven't decided. I was thinking about giving away one a month, but maybe I should give away two a month, like uh, every two weeks or so over the next couple uh, months. We'll see what happens. So that was an interesting one. I really can't tell you for sure how it's going to work out with that uh, security code in the BCM. I saw on Identifix there's a lot of hits saying that uh, some aftermarket accessories are actually ruining the BCM or something like that. And I found out later on as I was talking to my customer and they were talking to their customer that the column was also replaced. So this thing's a big basket case mess. They're very happy that it runs and it didn't run before. Hey everybody, keep an eye open for the U-Scope giveaway for the members of the Core Premium site. I really think this is a cool thing. I'm happy to do it and I'm hoping, I'm thinking maybe we should do, do probably two a month. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. You guys have a great evening. Have a great night. Bye-bye.